Hey guys, I know this is not my typical video that you are used to seeing, but recently some things have come up that I feel like I need to address. The story is really powerful, um, and thanks for being vulnerable talking about it. I do believe that she groomed me. I also believe she used me. And like, she's a mean girl. I just don't want her to abuse her power anymore. No, I should have never sent a fan underwear. How stupid am I? No, I definitely should have never given him access to my Twitter account. And no, I shouldn't have talked to him as often as I did. But I am not a monster. I am not a groomer. And I shouldn't kill myself. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into a Podcast hosted by me, Sloan. And today we are joined by Adam McIntyre, who is a fellow YouTuber. He has over 200,000 subscribers and 70 million views on YouTube. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited that you wanted to talk, so I'm I know. I'm I'm so glad that you're willing to talk to me too. And he's joining us virtually because he's based in the UK. How is it over there? Um, it's good. I cannot wait to get back to America though. So I'm um, anytime really? I come back to here, I'm like, oh, when's the next trip? I know. And I've actually hung out with Adam a few times in LA and I'm excited for you to come back. But we have some pressing matters we need to talk about today. Before we get into Colleen Ballinger, I want to talk a little bit about how you got started on YouTube because you post a lot like I do, which, you know, it takes a lot of work. So how did you even get started posting YouTube videos? I mean, 2010, I think I started and I was uploading like singing covers and then that segued into, I know, <laughs> thankfully not online anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I segued into making like, I guess, comedy videos and I using that very listily. And then the, the YouTubers that I watched at the time, I kind of replicated like my style of their videos. And then ultimately like what I do now, like commentary and drama that was in 2020. And it was really um, pivotal with uh, Shane Dawson's cancellation and none of my friends wanted to hear what I had to say on the matter and so I was like all right fine I'll just talk to YouTube about it and then people started really engaging with it and then they were like okay now I talk about this and it just kind of like snowballed it genuinely started as like none of my friends cared <laughs> so yeah. I just like I find a community that wanted to hear it so that's me from then till now yeah that's great so those original videos are those still like out there somewhere or did you like private at all they're most of them are private, but yeah. people have some. Yeah, no, I relate to that. So, um, and I love your content. It's very casual. It's like easy to listen to. It's like, and you do long videos sometimes too, which I love to like listen to that while I clean or like you know do tasks. So I enjoy your content. But um, one relationship you've had on the internet was with Colleen Ballinger, who is a big YouTuber. You may recognize her as Miranda Sings because that's the character she, I think she once played. Does she still play Miranda? I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but. I mean, at the time we're filming this, she's going on tour tomorrow as Miranda, so yes. Oh, wow, going on tour with this. I'm sure people are gonna ask her about it, but before we get into the everything wrong with what happens between you two how did you first connect with colleen um so i was like an avid subscriber i mean it was her and jenna marbles were like my i mean that to me um and i just kind of became a member of like twitter fandoms by engaging in like live streams and tweets and stuff like that and then i kind of built my way up as I would always be like chronically online as like a 13 year old. So I was like always, you know, responding to tweets and stuff. And then my name started getting more familiar with the family and then they started, you know, following. And then the more I engaged over the years, the more it kind of turned from like, you know, just like public tweets or mentions on live streams to like DMs and stuff like that. Or like seeing them at shows was another one, which was like, it was kind of, they could, I was an actual person rather than just a screen. So um, yeah, just kind of over the years, it, it turned more from like fan into like talking privately and stuff like that. And how old were you like at this point? Do you remember? I, it's, it would have started I whenever I was 13 and then I met her when I was, or I met her in 2014. So I think I was like 13 and stuff around then. And then 2014, I was like, just like fan relationship whenever I met her. And then it was the 2016, time that I met her was whenever then we started getting like more of a close bond because she was going through um, her divorce and she would kind of mm. confide in 
to like find information and stuff. So that was when I, that was really the pivotal moment. It was like 2016, whenever we really started to become, well, I hate saying it now because I feel stupid, but like friends, but whatever. Yeah. And that's already just really weird right there, what you're talking about. But as like a 13 year old, like you're engaging with this adult online, you're probably super excited because you're like a big fan. So at this point, like you're motivated to like, talk to them, engage with them. And at that point, I guess she's recognized you as an avid supporter. So she has some trusting relationship with you. So at one point you tweeted out, beware of parasocial relationships, folks, along with a picture of you too. Um, do you think this like, what we just described right here, that's already a parasocial relationship, right? I think parasocial relationships exist in general. I think they exist with like, you and your audience, me and my audience, the problem is whenever the creator abuses that. Mm. I think as a creator, it's hard to control a parasocial relationship in general on like a baseline, but I think there's a difference when you start like playing into it or genuinely just abusing it. I would not say that you abuse a parasocial relationship, nor would I say I do, nor would I say mm. a lot of YouTubers do. However, there is a lot of YouTubers that use that well and even to be honest as a creator i rarely engage with like people on the internet it's actually like even reading my comments and such which i know like sounds so boring but um i i am so scared of those type of relationships because it is there's a fine line you know and of course colleen crossed that line and i do want to clarify something so i because i had an understanding that you helped her with her twitter or something along those lines can you kind of explain like did you have access to it were you just helping her manage it what was your role there from like the end of 2016 start of 2017 was whenever she started opening up to me about like her insecurities on youtube because there were a lot of like new faces it was when musically was rising and she just wasn't happy with her content with miranda that's how it started and then it turned into content with colleen as well so from 2017 2018 2019 it was strictly over like twitter or snapchat giving ideas giving captions editing you know Mm -hmm. thumbnails or editing pictures for tweets or something and then it was in 2020 i did the same thing and then it was like literally like 24 to 48 hours that i that i particularly had the password however it was 2017 to 20 um 20 that i was giving the ideas on social media like privately to her mm -hmm. and then it was the 48 hours ish that i had the password and whenever i was going through my voice memos to her from years ago there's moments where i'm like okay i'm giving you this remember when i gave you that in 2017 so everything i'm saying has been like validated so um and that was all like strictly you being a motivated fan wanting her to do well like she wasn't like paying you or anything right um no but it, it also like so it wasn't necessarily that just I was like an avid fan who wanted to help her because there were conversations that she would have on like private in like Snapchat or something or Twitter or whatever that would she would open up about how she doesn't know if she can do Miranda for that long or people hate her online. No one watches her videos. So that was kind of the cards I was dealt. And then I felt bad that my again, so I'm, I'm like incredibly stupid to say this, but that my friend was struggling and I wanted to help her. And then I would say in voice memos or even in, that was the 2020, but like over text, I said the same things as well, which was like, you know, I know the character, I can help you, like, don't worry and stuff like that. But it wasn't a case of me always being like, I'm going to help you. Let's do this. Let's do that. Because she would like trauma dump about how she fears that she's going to like lose her career. And then I would be like, don't worry, I've got you, which was stupid because I shouldn't have been doing that because I was being used. But in that moment, that's what I thought was the best mm -hmm. thing. And of course, all of this was happening privately. But then in 2020, a lot of it came to light because you posted a video, Colleen Ballinger, stop lying. And it went viral on the internet. Um, what inspired you to make that video? What motivated you to do this? So that video, the 2021, all stemmed because I had it was the interactions after I had gotten the password. And then I had posted a tweet about Miranda Singh's coming out as a Megan Trainor fan. And she started getting, and she approved everything. I mean, I've shown proof countless times that she approved it. She ended up giving me the password after she approved the tweets and asked me to validate them like three or four times. So then I get the password, tweet it. She starts getting backlash. Then she doesn't put blame on me at the start. 
And then the more backlash she gets, the more blame she puts on me till the end of her being like, all right, basically like get off the account and then I log out of the account. And then behind the scenes, her and her friend Corey, and Corey was kind of speaking for her a lot in DMs, were basically saying that I was trying to take her down, that I was trying to, you know, I was trying to do this tweet that would cancel her and that I was bitter and jealous and all these different things. And basically that my end game was to get her canceled because she spoke so openly about being scared to be canceled. So I made the video because I was like, none of that is the the truth like i have the de like i'm not even being like okay he said she said i'm like here's the tweets here's how over the course of 24 hours she went from this is my fault to i'm now in tears i would never be homophobic blah 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 and then i find that all like behind the scenes i confronted her she came to me in a really aggressive way and then didn't respond to me ever after that and then i made the video and by the way, even three years later, even if I had not made my recent video, I still stand behind that video 1000%. Yeah, as you should. And um, I also, so wait, you put out this tweet, but like they kind of jump on you having bad intentions. But like, is there anything, there was like nothing like really prior or was there like some tension that was building up that they would think that you would even do this? Because for, you supported her for so many years. Why would they like, you know, one tweet that's like was essentially approved? Like, why would that make you the automatic bad guy? Like, was it that much backlash that she just like had to cut you out? And I mean, I would think that support would have been worth like hearing you out. I don't know. I mean, it's been really hard to kind of even years later think about it because even when I go through DMs, mm -hmm. everything's there and it like it does not make sense. And it's really taken me taking it public and people validating that like how I'm feeling or whatever. There was no moment, there was no lead up, there was no tension, there was no whatever. But I genuinely, from looking at it now as like a 20 year old, instead of looking at it as like a 16 year old, is I think that she like, I think she had had her son and she no longer needed the content that I was giving her because she was now becoming a mommy vlogger. Oh. So I, I believe, and I've never said this online, but it's like what I think now, I genuinely believe that she had her son, she knew she'd, she could exploit the son and make the son the content, therefore didn't need my ideas. That's all she really cared about me doing anyway. And basically this was her way of getting rid of me, which was gaslighting me. And of course, again, I was so stupid enough that I believed that I was in the wrong um, into then this fallout. And I genuinely don't believe she ever thought I would respond to her because again, I was so stupid for all these years that I believed anything or everything she told me. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I, there was no, there was no build up. There was whatever, but I genuinely believe that her and Corey were probably just planning this for a while. So you mentioned like looking back at those messages, like it's somewhat like triggering. Um, you've talked about like feeling used or possibly groomed by Colleen. So, I mean, I would say already, like as a creator talking to a 13 year old, like that just is like, so insane to me. Um, or engaging with 14, 15, 16, honestly, anyone who's like a minor. Um, so do you feel like she did use you and groom you into this weird parasocial relationship? People always like to be like, you never answered the question. So I'm going to open it with yes. Okay. Yeah. I do believe that she groomed me. I also believe she used me. And here's the thing in her 2020 apology video, which I'm so glad people are going back and looking at it and basically when she posted that 2020 video, I knew that it was all bullshit. I knew that none of it added up. I knew that she was talking behind the scenes and then saying she wasn't in the video. I knew all this. However, in the recent week, there have been a bunch of YouTubers who've looked back on the video knowing what we know now and have proven that she lied in the video and manipulated it. So that's why I actually don't fear her responding to me this time because I know that I can just highlight the point that she did this once before. Um, but in her 2020 apology, she made this big deal that she had to respond because the word grooming was going viral on Twitter. Horrendous. No, I should have never sent a fan underwear. How stupid am I? No, I definitely should have never given him access to my Twitter account. And no, I shouldn't have talked to him as often as I did. But I am not a monster. I am not a groomer. And I shouldn't kill myself. And I never said that word on Twitter. Didn't even know what that word meant, by the way. Um, but this time looking back on it, I am going to use that word. Grooming doesn't have to be she wanted me sexually or anything like that. Grooming, literally the definition is like getting something off of someone and making them feel a certain way. She made me feel loved. She made me feel, you know, secretive. Like I was like one of the only fans that knew all this information. And then the end goal was me 
giving her all this work for free or, you know, bullying people online, harassing her ex-husband. So I would say yes. So I want to talk a little bit about the ex-husband and then leading into like her kind of confiding um, with you with her relationship issues, because I do think that's like incredibly inappropriate. So um, when it came to her ex-husband, like what was like the I mean, the relationship I guess, like, what were you doing for her to, like, look into him or, like, I guess, bother him, kind of like what you were just mentioning? Like, wh what was she putting you up for? So whenever she announced the divorce, it was on my birthday, the 30th of September, 2016, because mm. she, she sent me this message being like, like, I'm, I'm so sorry I ruined your birthday with my horrible news and stuff. And so that was kind of the start of it. But anyway, the divorce was really messy because they were I, – I, I, shipping it was josh lean they were like they were one of the big youtube couples so people took mm -hmm. sides and a lot of most people took her sides but a lot of people took josh's sides and there was cheating allegations there was you know abuse allegations there were all these different things and she needed people to be defending her but she didn't want to do it herself so that was why she would then tell things in like the weenies group chat which is a group chat of me and like a bunch well not a bunch but like 12 ish fans and we were like the chosen ones um she would she would tell us about him being like emotionally abusive to her she had to escape the marriage she's crying every day he did this he did that and then she would tell some of us i don't want to speak for them because i know it happened to me so i'm not going to speak for them but then she would confide in me privately that all this was happening as well and then her sister-in-law jessica would also be like you know i'm so sad that colleen's going through this like you have no idea whatever and then it turned into guru gossip websites were talking about her possibly being the bad guy and so I mean, I showed all these DMs as well, but I would literally have to let her know what was happening on the guru gossip sites, what people were saying, up to date with everything. I mean, I have so many DMs from her that I showed where she's like, give me the tea now, like I need to know what's mm -hmm. happening. And I also showed a bunch of DMs recently that are literally her being so obsessed with Josh. Like when she was with her now husband, Eric, where she's like, Josh is so obsessed with me. It, it's all she wanted to talk to me about. I mean, most of the relationship up until I started, like it turned into just, like weird and then working for her was just talking about Josh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, um, I, I mean, that's it really like nasty too, as like a creator to want to like have another creator, I don't know, do poorly or try to like send like hate their way because like, you know, the internet is so malicious to all of us sometimes. So it's like, why would you even want to put that out there? I feel like you're going to get it back, you know, yourself. And, um, and maybe, it was, successful he got ran off the internet i mean to this day so yeah that's really tragic so um well i want to talk a little bit about the lingerie so like can you explain a little bit of like what I, I think that's like one of the talking points like in this entire situation that really sticks with people because it is such a weird moment and there's that video clip that's going around right now um can you kind of explain like what happened there some context yeah so she did a live stream in 2016 and she was just like talking with fans and stuff and then she started giving away her clothes and at this time i was one of the like avid members of the fandom and so the story goes that I talked about it in my original video in 2020 and talked about how she sent me lingerie. Back then, I didn't talk about all the sexual DMs and inappropriate stuff that mm. she'd asked me. So that context was missing because I was too embarrassed to reveal it to anyone, including my parents. Um, unfortunately, everything's out now, humiliating as it is, um, even though I was like, 15 when she was asking me all that but anyway so i left all that out so there was like a plot hole for people and people were like okay what's the context so when she responds in 2020 in her apology video she's like here's the clip adam was begging for them and she shows this clip and then public opinion is like oh my god you begged for them like you were you were you know all these different things and to this day like it's still something that gets commented on my videos and stuff <laughs> the panties the panties what's that bra you want the bra? Everyone wants the bra. Did that boy win these or not? I don't know. He has to tell me what he wants. What do you say? Is he being mean? <laughs> he said, um, hi, you have ugly clothes, but I want those ratchet panties and bra signed by Corey because he modeled them well. I knew that it wasn't the truth, but the live stream was always like going up and going down and going up. And so it was hard to, you know, really find that moment. And then in the past week, people have resurfaced the actual mm -hmm. clip, which is the one she shows is, oh my God, Adam's here. And then it cuts to, Adam wants the lingerie. 
And then the actual clip is she goes, Adam's here. Oh my God, do you think he would want the lingerie? That would be so funny. And Corey's wearing it and he goes like, the, Adam, do you want the lingerie? Do you want the lingerie? And Colleen's like, oh my God, we need to send him lingerie. His parents will be so freaked out. They'll be like, why is this grown woman on the internet sending you lingerie? And it will be so funny. And she'll be like, don't talk. And then she was like, no, but then he'll tell his parents, no, I saw people wearing it on the internet. Do you want the bra, Adam? Adam, do you want the bra and panties? Tweet right now. Adam, let me know what you want. I'm sending him something. Okay, maybe he'll want the panties. Although then his parents will be like, you're not allowed to watch who is sending you panties. <laughs> even mom, don't worry. I watched the boy wear them online first. That's the full clip that has now been resurfaced. And I'm so glad because finally people are seeing the truth. And, um, I just can't believe that she got away for three years with an edited, manipulative clip of that. Um, and I'm out of all of this, that has been the thing that has been validating the most that people saw that she had intentions to send me that. And then people go, OK, but after that live stream, you were still asking for them. You were still, you know, the problem was behind the scenes, Colleen told me that she was also going to be sending me a letter with it. And that, to me, was acknowledgement for my favorite person. Oh, my God, I'm one of the chosen ones that's going to get something sent, and I'm going to get a letter. So, of course, I continued asking for it. However, the problem is people did not know the context that she literally, on the live stream, her and Corey, as creepy as they were, thought it would be so funny how my parents would react to 30-year-olds sending me lingerie. And that's the truth of the matter. Also, did you ever rece actually receive a package? I don't know yeah, that... they, they, oh, came. You you got... <laughs> they, they came. And because, because I didn't have any money, something arriving to the house was always like weird and i remember telling my parents that she was sending me a letter which was true but i left out the other part and uh, so then whenever it, whenever it arrives my mom's like oh my god this is from colleen because it literally had her address on it and it had like everything to do with them because they had to do like a uh recip or sorry sender yeah sorry. yeah so i open it and my mom and brother are watching as i open it and they're like what is that? And then I explain to them and my mom takes it off me, but allows me the letter. Then later on, during one of the calls with the group chat on the weenies, I knew where my mom had put it. So I went into her room, took it and put it on over the clothes like Corey had, because Corey made jokes behind the scenes that whenever I get it, could I do that? So I put the, the bra on over my clothes in the weenies thing. Little did I know that the members of the chat were actively recording me at 15 years old doing that. And then in 2020, plastered that against my consent, everything all over the internet and said that I was basically a sexually like charged person at 15 yeah. years old doing that. Whenever Corey was like, when you get this, do this. And then whenever I took it off the call, I put it back where my, where my mom had put it. Um, I mean, that is just, it's all so freaky. And the fact that she actually like sent it and like, you know, you're in the UK, so you've got like to do the little like extra form for international. It's just like really weird to me that it even got to that point. And, um, I mean, were your parents comfortable with you even like talking to this person online and like being so engaged in the internet? Or were they kind of like, you know, unaware of like how deep it all went? My parents were happy that I was happy and they only knew that Colleen was in a grip chat with me, which was the weenies. And they would see like public tweets back and forth. And they were so happy that I was so happy. And I would have often conversations with Colleen where she would, you know, trauma dump or she would say something inappropriate or whatever. And she would be like, wait, 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 don't tell anyone that. Like, don't, don't, don't like keep this between us. So I also, again, I'm a very stupid person, believed that I was protecting her in that and then didn't tell my parents. So my parents knew about the friendship but didn't know about the extent of it. And it was really the pivotal moment was that meeting her in 2018 Dublin, whenever my parents started really side eyeing her. And then it was then, and it was, it was the day of the video in 2020 where they really started to find out everything, unfortunately, because I kept it from them because I thought I was protecting my friend. Yeah. So, um, and you know, you are still so young. So I feel like even with all of this, like there's no, like, I don't know. It's not wrong. I mean, your friend, she was your friend. I mean, it was just an incredibly inappropriate friendship and you were a child. So there's no like punishment or weight on you for this. But, um, can I just say thank you for saying that? Because like, it's been three years that no one has really admitted that. And like, it's a very validating thing to hear. And I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah. Even like, it's so gross that they were trying to like paint you as like sexually deviant or something. That's just like, so like, it's just so far out there because you know, we're still figuring out who we are even I know, you know, I'm older than you too. And I'm like, 
just like figuring out who I am as a person. So there's no, and this is a huge lesson for you. And also just for the world, I'm like really proud of you for speaking about it publicly too, because a lot of, there's a lot of different weird grooming relationships out here. And I think that like, sometimes we don't see the social media, like creator, you know, on fan type, you know, the details of that. So the story is really powerful. Um, and thanks for being vulnerable talking about it. When it comes to you, like meeting her, before we go a little bit into the falling out, um, meeting her, can you just go through briefly each time and like how that happened? So 2014 and 16 were meet and greets. And like um, what, she just had a tour or something or a book or something or? Um, she was doing the Miranda Sings tour and she was in Dublin both those times. And um, I went to both those shows with my parents. So my parents were aware of the relationship, but whenever they see me meeting her at a meet and greet, they think it's like a professional, you know, celebrity. They, they would have never guessed that she was abusing it the way she did. Um, and it was really only after 2016 that everything started, you know. Um, but anyway, so those two were meet and greets. And then so it was 2013, 20 2014. Did she kind of know who you were? Like at this point, like had you make made enough of an impact online where she was like, oh, Adam, like she kind of knew you or at least in 2014. It was the end of 2013. I started posting edits on my Cookie Ballinger Instagram and she started reposting them on Miranda. And then she would start talking about me on live stream. So it was 2013, 14. Then whenever I met her in 2014 is the picture of, you know, the selfies with the iPads and stuff like that. Um, that was 2014. But it was like really strictly like fan then. And it was 2016 was whenever I got like a little bit longer than everyone else at the meet and greet. And I got more photos at the meet and greet than anyone else. And I started, you know, people were like, you're getting special treatment. Um, like even my friend who went to the show with me, like she was like, why did you get more photos? And, and it was because Colleen and Corey were talking to me behind the scenes. Um, but then it was 2018 was I had been, you know, working for her. I'd been helping her through her divorce. She had been telling me about her relationship with Eric before it hit the public. Like there was a lot of trust and a lot of whatever. And it was 2018. She promised me that she was going to like spend this day with me. And the reason for that was because she used to promise me things in turn of me doing things. And she would never be like, to clarify, she would never be like, I'm going to hang out with you if you do this. But in my DMs that I've shown, it's painted like that. Like she will literally like love bomb me or I love you, I'm so proud of you, you're the most amazing, blah, 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 blah. You're so great at your whatever. And then I'll be like, thank you so much, whatever. And I'll be like, oh my God, like what an amazing friend. And then she'll be like, did you just see what Josh is posting? Like, could you go like look or something? And that was something that happened where she would be like, are you able to look at what's happening here? Are you able to blah, 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 blah. This person said this, I'm so sad, whatever. And then she'd be like, I'm so excited to see you in Dublin though. And it was originally, I was going to go to a wax museum with her. We were going to go to dinner. And I think we were going to do something in between that, but I can't remember. And then she was going to go back to, uh, or sorry, I was going to um, go back to the hotel with my parents, then go to the show. So we were going to do something during that day. And this had literally been dangled over my head the same way she said she was going to bring me out to VidCon in 2017 or 2018 um and this was again peak time of her getting like cheating allegations and stuff so i was really going hard for her on social media um and the reason that she was going to fly me out to vidcon was she organized this purple heart friendship um contest which was people in her fandom could speak up about friendships that they made on the fandom and she would fly two people out to vidcon and she told me on snapchat that she was going to make me win the uh, competition and something and all because I was doing all this, whatever. And she'd be like, you know, people know me. People know that I think of you as a friend or whatever. These are Snapchats I included in my video, by the way, um, so just for, for everything. Um, and then something happened where I didn't reach a deadline or I didn't let her know about something or something happened on Twitter. I can't remember what it was. And she gave the prize to someone else and then messaged me and was like, hey, babe, like it was just way too much money to fly you out, like blah, 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 blah. And ironically, one of the people that won was from the UK as well. So whatever. But the the meeting her in Dublin was something that was really strung along. And then whenever my parents are driving me to Dublin, which was four hours away from Derry, we were supposed to meet at a certain time at the Wax Museum. And at the time of meeting her at the Wax Museum, like 10 minutes or something before, she was like, hey, like, I'm not feeling it. Like, I'm just hungry. Like, can we just meet up for food instead? So people don't know that, like, the time we were supposed to meet up at the Wax Museum was whenever we were supposed to, or sorry, when we were going to meet up for lunch was when we were going to go to the Wax Museum. And then she already is at the place we were going to go to lunch. And I'm not even in Dublin yet. And she's like, we're already here with our burgers. I'll order you food and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, but I'm, I'm rushing. I'm almost there. And then I go, my parents are going to be so angry at me because now they thought I was going to be spending like an hour with her. They were going to check into the hotel. 
but they now find out that she wasn't doing that. And then I told them that, oh no, she's already there. And they were like, okay, but we're like 20 minutes away or you know, 10 minutes away. She's gonna be done by that stage. So I get there, my dad goes to the hotel and my mom stays on the street because my mom knows they've been there for a while. They're gonna be done their food. And I think that was whenever things were starting to set in or whatever. Um, and I get to the burger place after her being like, Jesus Christ, where are you? Blah, 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 blah. Even though she was the one in the wrong. And I sit down at the Eric's outside smoking and I go, hi. And he goes, hi, she's in there. I was like, okay. And I'd never met him before. And I go in and I'd heard so much about him. Like, my goodness, I was like the person who like helped her tell her how to flirt with him when they were sitting by the pool in Hawaii, but whatever. And then I go into the, the, it was like a Bunsen burger in Dublin. And she goes, hi. She goes, oh, like, you're really late. Like, I need to sign check. And she just like sits like this the entire time. And then Eric comes back in. And I think I had like maybe a conversation with them about like haters back off or something like that. Then she like was like, all right, can we get the bill? And then we get the bill and when we're walking out she's like oh like you can just like walk me to like my hotel which was like right next door and that was it it was probably like five minutes with her so this thing that had been strung along didn't end up happening but again i was stupid and should have known better that she wasn't going to do it nor cared about me or whatever it was just for me to do things for her, but yeah that's so inconsiderate and even like now like i feel like with some like relationships or like what i've witnessed sometimes yeah. the way that she would like reply to me be like i love you so much blah, 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 like on twitter to get you to do things it's like it's just literally it's like she didn't actually feel that way she just knew that you were infatuated with her because of her social media and because of this relationship you had had that she can like easily just say these things and then just you know throw you a task to do or you know her there's, dirty work there's something about that that has and I'm, I'm in no way like victimizing myself here but like the the like love bombing i experienced over years with her has made me really struggle with in-person relationships with friends and especially dating because anytime someone like opens up to me now or anytime someone like will be like i really like you or whatever especially in like the dating scene i just think like oh they just want to like get something off, off of me and they whatever and it's like it's like that's the thing that i've really taken with this yeah, it's like it's a just a transactional relationship. Um, so then, was that your last time seeing her? That restaurant interaction? Um, yeah, it was. After that, we went to the show, and then that was the last last time I met her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you had the falling out, so we talked a little bit about your video, um, and just briefly, I know that Corey and um, Colleen were apparently talking bad about, you know, you mentioned they were talking poorly about you in messages. You saw those. How did you see those and what kind of things were they saying about you? They were basically saying that I was running hate pages for them. Mm -hmm. um, and this was right after she started getting backlash for the Megan Trainer tweet. So she was basically. Were you running them. any hate pages or anything? No. no. Okay. I'm just, I'm just asking. I know, I know that you're just asking, but like, it's so ridiculous to even like for not saying you because I know you're asking the question, but for anyone, including them, to insinuate that I ever would because I'd show nothing but loyalty. Yeah. Uh, and I started getting sent these um, back on Twitter, like in 2020. And then I confronted her about it. And she was like saying that I was lying and how dare me and blah, 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 blah. And that's how that happened. You know, and even with the, we just said like, you know, there, there's definitely some emotional relationship there too, because she was so motivated to continue talking to you. Like, there was definitely some type of like satisfaction or something you were fulfilling with her. And maybe it's like something to do with the content. I, I find it fascinating that she like became like a family channel and like just started exploiting her kid and stuff kind of after that, because you know how we feel about family channels, but there must've been like some weird, like, and that's why I think this is like a grooming situation because they're like spending that time as an, a grown adult, like interacting with someone in that manner and even like spending the time talking about, you know, you doing these horrible things and stuff. It's like, I just can't imagine having the energy for that. So there was something that motivated her to continue this parasocial relationship with you. I think it all boils down to, I think in reading everything and like knowing what I know now, I think she's an incredibly narcissistic person and she continued the relationship. And there's so many people speaking up, by the way, now about their own like DMs and experience. Like it's 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 not my I story. I to ask you, like, are there a lot of um because you mentioned yeah. like the 12 people chosen. So those people are also like kind of speaking out as well. So some of them. So from 2021 to 2023, the grip chat that I was a part of, DMs started getting leaked of Colleen being inappropriate. And I was like, 
where are these coming from? Because mm. all the all those people started were the ones that were exposing me in the moment of me making my video because she was rallying them to, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm like, where are these DMs coming from? And it ends up getting validated that um, there was three members of the group that felt bad and they started leaking them. And now, probably most members, except probably one or two who were in that group, have reached out and apologized to me. And were like, if you need us to speak up, we'll speak up. And there's a couple of people that are like, this situation was so bad that I will not speak up unless it's anonymous. Um, because the group chat lived on past, you know, me being in it. I left, you know, before my video. Um, so there was, um, there, there was, there was that, yeah. So you posted your video. Um, after that video goes up, did Colleen privately reach out to you? No, but she started matching people saying like, basically like, how can we get them to stop? Uh, oh, like trying to get people on her side, trying to get a, like a team behind her to like kind of support, her I guess. This her team, by the way, was fellow, like children and young adults. <laughs> Yeah, because so. that, that was what got validated in Cody Tyler's video was immediately she confided in Cody because Cody was a YouTuber, whereas I was her YouTuber that did the dirty work. Cody was now the other one. And Cody showed all these messages, which go to show that in Colleen's apology, she says she never spoke bad about me. She would never do this. She was just trying to, you know, make this video and she would not speak about a minor and blah, blah, blah. It's been proven that she spent the two weeks between my video and her apology basically trying to take me down and get as many people to feel bad for her and villainize me as possible. When addressing everything came out um, from Colleen, uh, like one, how did you like feel in that moment? Uh, just seeing that go up. And then two, like, what are some of the statements that she made that you just like that sit with you still that like irk you inside that you're like, that is just not true. It was the worst. It was actually the worst. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And it just was awful. And I'm so glad people are looking back on it now and being like, well, none of this really adds up. And the fact in her apology video, she was manipulatively editing clips to make me look bad, like goes to show everything. Um, in terms of, sorry, what was the second part of your question? Like what statements or what are some things oh, she yeah. said in her video that you're like, that is total BS, like you're wrong here. Um, she put her own insecurities and faults onto my mother and was and said basically along the lines of I'm not going to talk shit about a minor. I'm not going to talk about him. I'm not going to show our messages. He's a minor. Blah blah blah. I'll talk about the parents. So she talks about my parents. However, behind the scenes, she was talking about me at length. So she was also talking shit about me, and then brought my mom's parenting into it. And that's the main thing for me to move past this. I want me and both of my parents by name to have a private and public apology, and then I'll stop talking about this situation. Yeah. I mean, that's really this is like such a cop out on her end. It's like now you're going to be the adult like, oh, now it's like and like, you know, we're talking about the parents because it's inappropriate, like convenient I, for her. Something that's really ironic um, is she my mom ended up messaging her and was like, this is Adam's mom. Like, now you know how it feels like when someone's like mis talking to your your um, child, like never speak his name and tell Corey the same. What's ironic is Colleen never responded to that message, but had no problem responding to a minor. And also, if you compare that with the message she sent me before I met up with her in Dublin, where she was like, wait, are your parents coming? Because the worst thing in the entire world for, for Colleen was for me to be with her with my parents because she wouldn't be able to act in an inappropriate way with me, which is all she did. Yeah, she would have been like psyched out. Yeah. So now, you know, I've been seeing this situation all over the Internet. Before we get into your video you recently posted, what kind of like why did this start coming up again and kind of like led you not I don't want to talk about your video yet but just like kind of like what, what was was there a reddit thread or what was like happening that caused this to resurface well there's a Colleen Ballinger snark on reddit and mm -hmm. over the past couple years they've started like calling out how wrong she was in that situation and she was the only one who really started doing that and then the members of the grip chat started leaking the dms to the reddit so then the Reddit, so then the Reddit have all of these DMs of Colleen asking me if I'm a virgin, what my favorite sexual position is, can she have like ass pics and you know, like all these like different inappropriate talks and the things about like her talking about the abusive marriage and trauma dumping and blah, blah, blah. So it was out there. And I was like, right, I'm not going to comment on it. I'm not going to comment on it. Like it's just on Reddit. I'll ignore it, whatever. And then it was whenever Cody made the video and was like, here's 
Colleen DMing Adam, like if he's a virgin and blah, blah, blah. So then I had to address it. Yeah. So oh. you posted, so um, you posted the video, my relationship with Colleen Ballinger. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you're also starting to like advocate for other people who are standing up as well, which is super important. Um, how has this, what, what kind of, I mean, you wanted to address it because of everything coming back up again, but like, how has it been talking about it again? Like for you personally, like, do you feel, because it's a, it's a weird relationship. And I feel like now you're kind of in the thick of it all over again. You're probably going through those emotions. I mean, everyone has been really supportive um, nonetheless, but how do you feel about that video right now? I just know that for the support that I'm getting now, she's a manipulative person and her end goal will be to take me down. And I acknowledge that and that's fine and it's coming. I don't care. I could get like last time, death threats, doxing, my parents getting you know thrown under, all these different things. This time is different because this time, the amount of people that have spoken up about their own grooming or within members of her family or whether it was her or Corey or inappropriate talk or anything, the amount of people that are tweeting being like, okay, now I feel comfortable. This has been sitting and weighing on me for so many years. I do not care if tomorrow I'm the villain on the internet because like last time she's able to manipulate and edit things. It's what she's best at. I do not care this time because the amount of people that I've allowed to feel that they can comfortably share a story about an abuse of power or an abuse in general, that for me, I don't even look at the video in a selfish way anymore. Whereas maybe in 2020, I was like, oh, like, you know, the truth needs to be out there or whatever. This time I'm like, this was brought up, didn't ask for this to be brought up. Now I'm going to talk about it to the extent and others now feel that like they can talk about theirs. And honestly, again, I could be the villain tomorrow, but at least I've allowed a lot of people to feel that they can speak up. I mean, there's ex-employees of her speaking up. There's ex-fans of her. There's fans that are speaking up, ex-friends. I, I, I'm I not responsible for any of that. But if I could have been a uh, blow that allows people to feel that they can then speak their voice, I don't care if she makes me the villain, honestly, because it was worth it. Yeah, and I think that's super healing as well. Like, it just sounds like, you know, it gives me, like, goosebumps because I'm just like, oh, and it's kind of full circle. And I feel like it's it must feel nice to be validated on that level and to also not be the only one. I mean, it's, you know, it's unfortunate that there are so many people and the way that she would, like, inappropriately talk to her fans, make fun of these people. Like, it's just so nasty. I just can't imagine, like, as an adult, like, having the time to, like, do – all of this it does make me feel like you know i think you mentioned narcissistic like she may be like quite literally mentally ill in some way because i it is mentally ill behavior um after posting this video this most recent one has she or anyone in her inner circle like come to you no um and why do you feel like you said it's coming like you think she's gonna be addressing this again i think she has to this time except the problem this time is she was able to get out of it in 2020 by throwing me under the bus this time it's not, it's not just me. Like, again, like I said, ex-employees, friends, fans, whatever, like for her to come out and throw me under the bus, people could, people could be like, yeah, fuck Adam, hate Adam, run me off the internet. However, there's hundreds of people that their stories need to be addressed as well. So yeah, it's, it's also like you have receipts. There's no denying what you're saying here. Yeah. And that was why in my video, I mean the full, it's so memed the like, you know, screenshots on the screen or whatever. However, this time i literally just read out everything even messages i know i was like 14 or whatever that make me look bad because i was like at this stage let me put everything out there and you come to your own consensus like mm -hmm. this time i'm not going to do my 2020 video where i show you a screenshot here and a screenshot there the video is going to be an hour 40 i'm sorry it's long however i want you to see everything and come to your own opinion if you hate me by the end of it you hate me at the end of it if you like me whatever i just this time i'm so in bed up and i'm someone else bringing it up, which I'm not grateful for in theory because it, you know, has started this where other people can feel they, whatever. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to show everything and you come up with your own opinion. Yeah. I mean, you have nothing to hide. Yeah. So for the past three years as like a person just on the internet, um, do you feel like when you come across like Colleen or Miranda content, like how does, do you, at this point, are you kind of numb to like seeing her face or her content? Or do you kind of feel like a feeling inside, like, it evokes some emotion, like some negative feelings, or how do you feel seeing her face around? She doesn't provoke negative um, feelings in me at all. 
what does provoke negative feelings is that I see that there's still fans engaging with her how I did. That's the difference. I don't like I don't I do not care about her. I care about the fact that this is still happening with fans. And like in probably five years or three years or something like that, we're going to experience another Colleen Ballinger stop lying. Just stop the circle or cycle. Mm -hmm. Sorry. The cycle. So have you seen her latest podcast venture with Trisha Paytas, the oversharing yeah. with Colleen and um, Trisha? What, what are your thoughts on that? Did you watch it? Oh, sorry. Um, I did watch it. Um, and I mean, I like reviewed it as well. Um, the most ironic thing to me is, me, I spoke about this online, and there's also her ex-employee, Johnny, has told me, like, been speaking with me behind the scenes as well, and he was like, you know, like, whatever. Colleen would make fun of Trisha. Like, Colleen is not a friend to Trisha. And it's funny because Trisha is so obsessed with Colleen and will not acknowledge the fact that Colleen does not like her. And Colleen has a mean girl attitude to her. So the reason I started reviewing the podcast was because I'd been saying these things. So I was like, let's watch it and see how Colleen interacts with Trisha. And within the first 30 minutes, people were like, oh, Adam's telling the truth because look how Colleen brings up weight to make Trisha feel bad or brings up mental problems to bring up, you know, whatever, or brings up frenemies or brings up drama or something. It Like, she's a mean girl. Yeah. Uh, and it seems like I don't know I would say like personally I'm not on like YouTube that much and maybe I'm wrong saying this but like Colleen just seems kind of irrelevant to me like and I don't know Trisha Paytas has always kind of had like Sloan do not say that she's becoming irrelevant because in a couple of weeks she'll post a pregnancy announcement if you say that <laughs> oh no oh yeah because that's now the money maker right the children yeah well, I think that she's kind of hooking on to Trisha right now because Trisha like has a way of always like kind of like capturing people's attention. So like maybe with like she could get with like Trisha, she can kind of you know reinvent her career. But I can't imagine her even going on tour right now and feeling comfortable with all of this like going on on the internet. So weird. I don't know, but I think by the time this comes out, we'll see if she does these shows this weekend or not. But I mean, yeah. as well, it's like one of the conversations that came up in my video and a lot of fans have been speaking up about the fact that during meet and greets, like there was a tweet today and a tweet yesterday where people met Colleen and someone on Colleen's team, whether it was Corey or her manager, like was allegedly fat phobic to them and was like, Oh, like you're too big for Colleen to put their arms around you and whatever. Like I think two people on Twitter so far. So like aside from my story, the fact that she's possibly doing a meet and greet tomorrow without addressing that claim to her fans feels incredibly just sad to me. Yeah, it's like dismissive of the support. It doesn't even like the fact that when you're describing that um, restaurant interaction with her, like that just seems so like gross to me because when I meet people out about, you know, I'm always just like so kind, so friendly. And the fact that you had done so much for her and then she's just like sitting there like, acting annoyed it's just like oh god she doesn't seem very grateful for you know everything that's happened i don't think so, so. i don't think so i do want to talk a little bit more about a few other things before we um wrap up this episode but is there anything else you would like to share about colleen or anything that you feel like we didn't necessarily talk about i just want to i'll make it broad and it will be the the conversation of like power dynamics and stuff like that whether it's colleen the ballinger family YouTubers, influencers, someone in your life, someone of power above you. Don't allow yourself to feel that you can't speak up because they are lighter than you. Because if this story has shown anything, it's that in 2020, I spoke up and got ran off. But the truth will prevail. I came back three years later with the exact same story. And like, it, it's a lot different now. So I would say just... That would be my main thing. If anyone in life, workplace, whatever, don't feel that you can't speak up because of a power dynamic. Because if there's a truth there, if there's, you know, it, it will prevail. Yeah. And I think, and I love that. Like, that's why that's something like, you know, and you know, the content I talk about on YouTube too. And there's, I love like survivor awareness and activism because there's even like looking at stories from like 20, 30 years ago, um, they were so dismissed and people weren't you know actually hearing these people out and i feel like you were like dismissed at that point and you know it was a lot of people's first time really hearing your name and i, I think now you've had like a few years to establish yourself on the internet and people know like where your intentions are um for colleen the colleen like situation in general um just i want to list a few things so to find some closure here we would want like an apology from colleen to your parents and you publicly and uh privately uh her probably to stop talking to these minor fans and like maybe like get some friends and then um 
do you want her to just completely be off the internet? Like what, what would you want to see happen? No, I, and I would never, ever, ever say that. What I want her to do is she can continue posting her content. I be it. Don't, I, I will always be against family channels, but there's other content that you can make. I want to focus the conversation on, I just don't want her to abuse her power anymore. I think that's pretty good on Colleen. Um, and, you know, I think it's interesting too, how like on social media, things are recycled, um, you know, a few years later, and even like my content, like I mentioned, like I talk about things that are years ago, and then it's just kind of a new story. Again, you could really, it, it brings people new people are paying attention to that story. And, um, there's a new attention. And pretty much what I want to say is that there was a moment with Rich Lux where this kind of happened, where he did some things like wrong, I guess. Um, I can't even necessarily remember the clip, but there was a time where you shared this clip and it kind of caused a rift between you and Rich. And I don't really like want to talk about it too much because I don't think it's necessarily relevant, but I do want to like um, just clarify that you guys had like this drama where you had brought up a clip and then he felt like you were harassing him and that um, trying to stir up some drama. Have you guys uh, like made amends and where do you stand on that little like? Feud? So that was that me and Rich really didn't know each other. And I mean, especially like drama channels, you're always like pinned against each other. And so we really didn't have any relationship. And then one day someone had tweeted me a video of Rich and I had quoted it being shocked yeah and that was it that was like it that was it I, my caption wasn't even that bad or anything like that um and then rich made a video about me responding to it and whenever i and then me and rich are so good right now and whenever i look back on that now um i shouldn't have quoted the tweet because the tweet was of a situation that rich had already addressed so i should have looked into that however in the moment i was just on twitter and i was like whatever yeah. I did not know Rich. Rich did not know me. Didn't know anything to do with context of him addressing it or anything like that. It was like a complete fault on my end. And it's something that me and Rich have spoken about. And I really do appreciate Rich now. And who am I to like respond to a situation? I have nothing. Yeah. Like I have no awareness of. And we've I've like apologized and we've spoken about that at length. And Rich is actually someone I would consider a friend now and someone that like we can fight in each other for like stuff to do with YouTube, stuff to do with whatever. And it's um I really, Rich is a good guy. Rich is a good guy. I know. I think so too. Like I've like, I filmed my, so we had an episode last week go out with Rich and like that video was actually filmed a year ago, like over a year ago. That um, episode was like right when I, it was my first one I ever filmed for the podcast, like before I packaged and sold it. And I feel like I really just got to know him like since then. And he's like, you know, he has his online persona, but there's definitely something really genuine and real about him. So I'm glad that you guys like are cool because I, like you both. So I know like you're both normal people. It's just like kind of a miscommunication. And you also are, you tweet a lot. It was, so. all, it was all my fault as well. It was literally all my fault. That's why I like put my ha hand up and apologize for that. It was, I shouldn't have engaged with a tweet being sent to me. And even if it was quoting, you know, just like being shocked, or whatever, I shouldn't have done that. It was just like a petty thing to do. I should have done that. I like put my hand up fully and say that. Um, and that's why I was, you know, that's why I like moving forward with Rich because there was, there was, there was really nothing. You know what I mean? It was like me doing something petty and. It did get a lot of attention though. People were really it, like, it was a moment. Yeah, we were able to, and that was a moment where I realized that like, even me quoting a video like that was sent to me on Twitter and even with a simple caption, like being shocked, how much impact that can have. And that was why like, now I'm very aware of that. And, um, I'm not glad it happened because I didn't want to, I would never want to give Rich any pain or anyone any pain. Um, but it definitely taught me a lesson in terms of social media. And it was definitely something very important for me to go through. I'm just sorry that I had to put Rich through it. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's really big and, you know, grown up of you guys. And I, I love to see it. So you were mentioning earlier that like when it comes to dating, your relationship with Colleen kind of has impacted your ability to like, you know, define whether relationships like transactional or are they just trying to use me? Um, well, you're gay, right? I'm trying to like, and your yeah. pronouns are he, him. Try to yeah. be respectful. Okay. No, yeah. that's so, great. <laughs> <laughs> so what is like, um, I just want to ask you a little bit about your dating life because I love talking to like creators about those things because I think it's an interesting position to be in. You know, not yeah. everyone has our type of job and our schedules and such. So are you like dating anyone? Have you like dated anyone before? I'm like, first of all, I've never dated anyone before, but I've had situationships, um, which mm -hmm. always, you know, ended be crying. But um, no, I think, 
the current scene that I'm in, I'm in Brighton. It's a very, very, very like gay friendly place. So a lot of like queer people and um, it's definitely more so like hookup culture than anything like that, which is something that I have chose very early on not to partake in on the basis of, I just, I'm so scared of people using me or lying on me or anything um, that I don't really engage in that. So I go on dates and it mainly stems from, I mean, I'm on dating apps, but like I really rarely will ever use them. And mainly the like the last time I went on a, you know, was seeing someone, it was, you know, for like a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks ago. And um, it was basically like a friend of a friend. And then it started like that. So I'm like very like prudish about it, but um, I'm glad I am because it protects me in a way. Yeah. And also there's like, and when it comes to like hooking up or those things, like nothing beats actually having an emotional connection with someone like that's like really where it's at. So yeah. um, when, uh, so you said it's like pretty gay friendly there and such, and you enjoy living, you're from Ireland. So now you're in the UK, correct? Um, I'm from Derry in Ireland and I moved to Brighton. So like seaside. So it is very hot in this room right now. <laughs> oh, really? So um, w do you have any plan to come to America or move here? Um. I wouldn't say move for the foreseeable just because I have my animals and I would never want to relocate them. Um, but I definitely one day would love to be in New York. However, I'm in LA in a couple of weeks. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll have to like link up whenever you're here. Um, but yeah, that's, I think, I don't know. I always like want to like bring people here. Cause I'm just like moved to like United States with so much yeah. opportunity here and such. And like with our, our careers too. I mean, we could do it really anywhere, but I love living in LA because um, it's opened a lot of doors. When it comes to your social media career, what do you see kind of next for yourself or your channel? Just continuing to make these I just, videos? Or? I just like, I mean, for better or for worse, I don't really take what I do that like deep. I'm just kind of like having fun talking. And I mean, I've just like signed like a Twitch contract. Like I actually just got renewed. Um, so I'm now doing Twitch on top of YouTube. So I like daily live stream and stuff. And I, I'm just kind of having fun talking online and I probably should have a plan. I probably should whatever, but I feel that probably why my content can be enjoyed by maybe like one or two people like here and there, whatever is the reason that I probably don't take it that seriously, I guess. Um, so as unprofessional as the science, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, also like you're 20 years old. You have like already a established platform. Like imagine you in 10 years from now, like you're going to, as you're going to have ideas and things come about and like, you know, figure out projects. And I'm excited to see you continue on social media and just flourish and share your story. And I'm glad that like, despite this being like a tragic situation, it has like gone viral online and people have like gone to know who you are. So I'm glad that there's more people now who are learning who Adam McIntyre is. Hmm. Um, I guess for better, for worse. Um, but I also just wanted to like close it off and say, with the content you do, it's really important. I mean, we've spoken about this in person as well. Like it really, really, really is important. And the fact that you would, I don't mean to like blow smoke up your ass here, but the fact that you would choose to platform my story, I really do appreciate that. And like, that would be my closing statement would be for the work you do on YouTube in general, for the risks you take on YouTube in general, and for just caring in general but also caring about this specific story i really do appreciate it and i like love your content i love your work and you're also someone i would consider a friend so just thank you for it all yeah thank you adam i'm so glad you came on i'm gonna list all of his social medias below go and check him out go and support go check out those receipts if you want to go and see everything if we didn't include them in here but thank you for coming on you're welcome anytime and i'm always here for you so um i will see you guys in a new episode soon Bye, guys.